What's up everybody, this is Wallace from A3 Academy and today's topic is going to be on chromosomal crossover or just crossing over. Uh, it's all going to be back in the A3 Academy studio again. Just a few hours ago I was in kind of a rut up in Siberia but I was able to escape thanks to my knowledge of phase diagrams. So that's good. So let's get started with chromosomal crossover. It happens during prophase 1 of meiosis. During prophase 1, the DNA has replicated and it's condensed into these chromosomes that are sticking together. And when they stick together, it's called synapsis. Now these stuck together chromosomes, they're called tetrads. And crossing over is when one chromosome in the tetrad exchanges DNA with the other chromosome, like this. Each one of these sister chromatids, there are four of them, they'll become part of the DNA of four zygotes. The DNA of each zygote is completely unique, there are no exact copies, which means that crossing over contributes a lot to genetic diversity. There are lots of different ways you can cross over and recombine DNA. Now in order for crossing over to occur, you need these two chromosomes to be next to each other, and they need to touch. The place where they touch is called a chiasma, and at this chiasma, DNA from both chromosomes is unzipping and re-zipping onto each other so that the chromosome can detach and reattach the part of the DNA that it wants to cross over. And the place where the zipping action occurs is called the holiday junction. So let's take a look at one of the four sister chromatids of the tetrad. Each chromatid has a long line of genes on it. And since crossing over can happen anywhere, sometimes these genes get separated. And one of these genes will get switched out for another version or allele of that gene. When these different alleles mix and match, that's when we have recombination, or recombinant DNA. Since crossing over is completely random, the chromatid can get cut anywhere, which means the farther apart these two genes are, the more likely it is they're going to get cut apart. And the closer these two genes are on the chromosome, the less likely it is that they're going to get cut apart and be used to create recombinant DNA, which means less recombination equals a smaller genetic distance. Genetic distance is just the relative distance between two genes on a chromosome. And if you study recombination enough, you'll be able to do things like gene mapping, which means that you'll be able to find where genes are on a certain chromosome and map it out. Later on, we'll show you how to study recombinant frequencies to find out the gene map of a certain chromosome. Recombinant DNA is also how they came up with the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. So now that you know the basics of crossing over, that's it for today. I'm Wallace from A3 Academy, and as always, the more you know, the better you are.